Lauren, congratulations on the victory. Um, I'm not sure if this what you were expecting, a scrappy back and forth, but how did you feel the fight was going to play out? And was it just like that? Uh, I didn't know how the fight was going to play out. I knew if it went to the ground, I could be really dominant. So the second round was definitely like, I was like, yes, okay, let's do that again. <laughs> you know? And uh, she adjusted really good in the third. But I thought I won round one. I knew it like wasn't a blowout, but I thought I landed the bigger shots. I thought I had the cage control. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought I just landed bigger, harder shots in round one. And so when I went back, I was like, okay, that was close, but I think we got that one. And then in the second round, like really turn it up. Let's get this takedown. And so the takedown actually felt pretty easy. Um, my top control felt really good. Um, I had her wrist trapped. I tried to go to mount. She was doing a really good job of controlling my grips. And then in the third round, I, it was like, I'm sure her corner told her like, do not get taken down at any, you know, any cost. Like <laughs> don't get taken down again. And so she was doing a good job of keeping her hips back and uh, staying like far away. She was moving a lot, not, not letting me put her on the cage. And um, I don't know. I thought the third round was close too, but I thought she won the third round. She hurt me to the body pretty good and she busted my eye open. So I was like, okay, I definitely lost the third, but uh, I think we have rounds one and two for sure too. And so when they said split decision, I was like, all right, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Is there, do you think there's an argument for round two being a 10-8? You're on top for a while. Yeah. Uh, I guess you could make that argument. I, I none of the judges made it a 10-8. No, no, no. So yeah, I don't, who cares? Um, so you are you able to make that sort of analysis while you're in there? You At the end of each round, are you able to go, okay, that round was mine, or is it all a blur until the end, and then you sort of have to waiting for the judges' score? Coming? Away from that, because I after every round, I used to be really concerned, like, who won that round? And uh, as I've gotten better and, like, further up in the division, it's like they're going to be close. You know what I mean? When I, when I fought Andrea Lee, I can't remember the exact scorecards, but I remember thinking like, okay, I won this round and this round. And then the judges gave me like, two judges gave me a round that I thought I clearly lost. Like when I when I fought Sarah McMahon, the same thing happened. So it's like, I kind of stopped. I t I've tried to get away from judging the rounds in the fight because it's like, you, you really can't, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know if you've been paying attention to any of the fights before yours, but there have been some wacky scorecards throughout the evening. I don't know if you saw that. And if you did, does that play on your mind when you head in? Say that again. Does it play on your mind when you see other fights, you see scorecards that kind of... No, I didn't really pay attention to, to any of the fights before mine. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not saying your scorecard was a wacky one. I'm just saying like some of the judging tonight has been crazy. So I wonder if that plays in your mind if we're talking about scorecards. No, not at all because I didn't... I mean, I watched some of the fights like from the locker room, but I don't really pay attention to like the scorecards. I'm not super invested in the fights before okay. mine. So... Um, yeah, I didn't pay attention to any of that. But Where, where does it leave you? It, it, it would seem most likely that you're in line for that title shot that you, you've wanted for so long. Do you feel that this was enough? Is, is this finally going to get you there? Yeah, you would think so, right? Like you would. JoJo was in line for the title before. Um, it, you know, I feel like we're all in the top 10. I, I just can't stress this enough. I've won five in a row against all ranked opponents. It's not like I've had any easy fights in this division. The division opened with me fighting Barb Honchak, who was considered one of the greatest flyweights at the time, she was ranked number three. I think I was a four to one underdog. Um, I lost to Sajara in the, you know, now she's a bantam weight, but like she was killing it at flyweight for a while. And that's my only loss in this division. After that, I fought, um, you know, I knocked out Mara Barella. She was ranked number 12. I think she was, I think I was an underdog to her. I was like a four to one underdog to Andrea Lee, who was ranked number seven when I fought her. Roxanne Modafferi was ranked number five. She was on a, she was on a tear at the time. Um, the girl that, you know, I was supposed to fight Cynthia, but the girl that I ended up fighting took it on short notice. And it's like, she was like nine and O or something or something like that. And a champion in another promotion. And then I just fought Jojo. Jojo's tough. Dana White was talking like two days ago about how Jojo is one of the best in the world. I was an underdog coming in here tonight too, you know? And that's what I mean is that I'm finding a way to win these fights. That's what I do. I'm tough. I hit hard. Uh, I'm scrappy. I stay in people's faces. I make them tired. I'm, I'm one of the best fighters in the world, and I've been proving that to you guys over and over and over again. Some of the fights have been close, but I'm getting my hand raised every time. For, for what it's worth, I actually don't know anyone off the top of my head that could really argue for a time shot, unless they pulled some really obscure name out of somewhere, but I feel <laughs> like it's, it's pretty much yours for the taking. So let's say you finally get that shot. How do you feel that fight goes? How, have you been watching her from afar, building a game plan, knowing that eventually you're going to get this? Val you know? Valentina? Yeah. Um, I 
no, that would be something like me and my my coaching team. We'd all probably get together. I really do have the best team in the world, though. Like the team that I have built up around me is the best in the world. And so we would all have to sit down together and it would be some conversation like, OK, how do we win this fight? How do we lose this fight? What's the best plan of action? How are we going to make that happen? You just mentioned about how many times you've been the underdog going into a fight. <laughs> Presumably that would be the same case against the champion. But do you think that almost gives you an advantage? You're like, look, they thought I was the underdog every time and I've been able to overturn it. I'll just do it again. Is that, is that part of the mindset? I think that's just going to be the story of my fight career, man. Like it, it has been, even in Alaska, like I was an underdog and I fought for a belt up there. Uh, and Invicta, I was the underdog, I think, for every fight I had in Invicta. Um, I've been the underdog in a lot of fights in, you know, a lot of my fights in the UFC. But I've actually won the belt for every promotion I've ever been signed to. I have TKOs in three different weight classes. You know, I'm 15 and four. That's an awesome record. I fought some of the best girls in the world and gotten my hand raised against them. I'm very, I'm extremely well-rounded. I think I'm one of the most well-rounded fighters on the roster, not just in the women's divisions either. I mean, men, women, the whole UFC roster. I think I'm one of the most well-rounded fighters out there. I'm a big flyweight. I'm super strong for the division. The takedown I got in the second felt easy when I could get to it. You know what I mean? I think she did a good job of adjusting, but uh, not letting me get to it in the third, but I'm, I'm one of the best fighters in the world. I, I, I think the only person that it really counts that needs to believe that is me. <laughs> I'm the only person that really needs to believe that. But uh, in my mind, I've been proving it over and over again. Last thing for me, we have crowds back. Perfect date and location for a title fight for you. Anytime, any place. Thank you. Lauren over here. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Do you does it trip you out like that you get these wins, they still underestimate you. You win like a lot of people thought she was gonna beat you inside the in the dirty boxing. And to me, that's where you got the advantage. Was there anything that you saw from her differently? Or this went exactly how you trained for it? Because it seemed like you got comfortable and more comfortable the more you closed the distance and you were winning inside exchanges. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there was a couple things like my coaches and I were just talking about it. It's hard when you're in the fight, like after the fight, because you have so much adrenaline. I'm always like, what round did that happen? When did this happen? At this point, you know, um, I wanted to be a little lighter on my feet. We worked, we worked on some footwork a lot the last couple camps. And so my coaches were just telling me that that – like I did better this this fight, but they've seen me do better in sparring, you know, with my footwork. And then in the clinch, too, they said my hips were out. So uh, I didn't like hearing that. Um, I was trying to break down her posture in the clinch. And um, I, I was surprised at how well she was, like, grip fighting in the clinch. That, that was one thing that surprised me, and that's how she uh, busted my eye on the third was with the elbow from the clinch, I think. So that was one thing that kind of caught me off guard. Like, I, I feel really good in the clinch most of the time, and so when they said my hips were out, I was like, ah, dang it. <laughs> that's not really characteristic of me. But What adjustment did you make from the first to second round? And also talk about – give some insight to – when she busted you up, it seemed like you fought harder and you took more chances. Like a lot of people, once they get busted up, they kind of, I won't say coward. That's a, that's too strong of a word, but it seemed like that got you going in a weird way. Is that, is that safe to say? Yeah. That's what, looking in? that's what makes me a good fighter. Um, I thought I won the first round. Uh, I thought I won the first round. I know, I knew it was a close first round, but I was like, I definitely was landing the bigger, harder shots. I was snapping her head back. Um, I had all the cage control. I landed some good shots on the cage. Um, so I felt like we had the first, and then the second was obviously my round, and then I felt like she won the third. So when they said split decision, I was like, dang. But yeah, when they when they really start pouring it on, I'm not just gonna take that. You know, one of the things that makes me fighter is that I take, I grind, I stay in your face, I make you tired, I'm tough. I'm like the toughest person I know. I'm the toughest person a lot of people know, actually. <laughs> and. I, that's what that's one of the things that makes me such a good fighter. So when she really started turning it up in the third, yeah, you have no choice in there. Your back's to the wall. Like that's why I'm a fighter is because I don't cower down and I don't just crumble when people start pouring it on. Like she Superman punched me, I Superman punched her back. She hit me with the right hand, I hit her with the right hand back. Like I'm not just gonna take it from her. I'm gonna give it back. And like like Oscar alluded to, it's almost a given that you probably get the shot with Valentina. 
what mindset do you take in that and how much do you take chances? Because it's kind of crazy for her to be the goat of the division. People get on that stage and they seize up, but they don't take chances and she turns into a sparring session. How do you keep from doing what all these other people that have been victims of her do and, and or they get to put on her highlight reel, one of the two? Uh, I rely on my team a lot. I have really great coaches around me. Um, I have, you know, I, I'm literally surrounded by the best in the world. My team is the best in the world at what they do. I have the best sports psychologist. I have the best physiologist, one of the best physiologists in the world um, um, overseeing my entire camp, my training. I have the best striking coach. Alex Cisne is my head coach. He's He's good at everything. I, I really believe that I have the best team in the world around me. And so I rely on them a lot to create game plans. Um, I tell them what I'm thinking. They they give me feedback. Like we're we're really a great team. And final question for me. Can you give some people, since you got this big stage on why should they put some respect on Lauren Murphy's name? Because you talked about people keep underestimating you. <laughs> it's happening, you know, slowly but surely. People are coming around and they're starting to realize that like I'm not. I'm not a pushover, you know? There's a lot of girls out there that fight very pretty and they're overestimated in my opinion. And what I do is I get in your face, I'm tough, I make you tired, I make fights ugly, uh, I, I stay on you, you know? I'm strong, I'm physical. People, it's hard to deal with that. It's hard to deal with that. And uh, that's one of the things that makes me such a great fighter and it's who I am. So uh, I honestly don't care if people keep underestimating me. I hope I want a bunch of people money tonight. I hope a bunch of people bet on me. And I hope I, I hope, oh my gosh, that guy said that he was going to bet on me and he was going to give me five grand if I won. Mm. Yeah. I hope that keeps happening. You know what I'm talking about? I hope that keeps happening. Lauren, for, for what it's worth, Jorge Masvidal is out here retweeting that you deserve a title shot and stuff like that. So at least you have some support in one of the biggest names. The man himself has spoken, the BMF. <laughs> yeah. Lauren, to your left over here. Uh, you know, just going off of the underappreciation sort of, why do you think it is that people don't give you the credit you deserve? I think there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, I came on the scene, I wasn't, um, when I came on the scene, I wasn't well known. I wasn't good with media. I don't have an Instagram that's just full of me in bikinis. I don't have a calendar that comes out, you know, every year or whatever. Like, um, I don't have a cute accent. Like, I just feel like, I feel like sometimes people look at that and they might think there's nothing interesting about me, but my story is actually really amazing. And it's just taken people some time to come around to it. And it's taken me some time too, to learn how to deal with the media. I literally grew up on a dirt road in Alaska. So you guys will have to excuse me if I'm not quite savvy with how to be the most popular girl in the room. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm getting better at doing media. I'm getting better on the mic. Uh, I'm getting better with the things that, that catch your attention. But what I was really born to do is to fight. And that's all I've ever been interested in. I've never been interested in, in anything else. And um, I'm just a real person, you know? I, I, I think that takes people off guard sometimes. And um, I don't know. The other thing is, is that, like, like I said, like there's a lot of girls out there that fight really pretty and they're good at some things. And um, people like watching that, especially out of women. And that's just not my fight style. It's like I said, like I stay in your face. I make fights ugly. I make it hard on you. I hit hard. I'm very, very strong. And um, there's a lot of intangibles on my side that I think can't be measured, like my toughness and my heart and my strength. And um, that's what people really tend to underestimate in me. Does it annoy you at all that some of those other fighters, you know, maybe get a little bit more love? It used to, I think, when I was younger, but it it doesn't anymore. Like I, now, I'm like, oh, good for them. <laughs> you know, that's cool. Like they got their thing. Um, I got my thing, and I'm I'm actually really happy with my life. I have the best husband in the world. We've built a really great life around us. I love where I live. I love what I do. Um, got money in the bank. Got you know, my I have a really close relationship with my son. Like I have, I my cup overfloweth now, and um. I don't, I don't need all that other shit, man. <laughs> and last thing for me, Lauren, where would you rank JoJo among the opponents in terms of toughness out of this fight by winning streak? Oh, man, I, I just I knew it was going to be a tough fight because, like, uh, like when I fought Andrea Lee, I knew that was going to be such a tough fight. I knew it was going to I knew it was going to be hard. Like when I went in, I was like, oh, this is going to hurt, <laughs> you know, and I kind of knew that about this fight, too, because like me, Andrea Lee, JoJo, Jukagian, 
even like Jessica, I, Jennifer, Maya, like, I think if you had any two of us matched up together, if you have us fight 10 times, you're going to get different results 10, you know, 10 times. So we're all tough. We're all scrappy. And that's why we're all ranked in the top 10. That's why we put on the shows that we do. That's why we're in the UFC. And so, you know, just being real about it, I think we're, I think we're the best fighters in the world. We're the best flyweights in the world. And, and we're going to put on some of the best fights, but yeah, they're going to be close and they're going to be violent and, and uh, you're going to get different results every time. Maybe if Jojo and I fight again, maybe I finish her in the second round next time. Maybe, you know what I mean? It's like, there's just so many different possibilities in, in the fight game. Congrats, Lauren. Thank you. I would say as for Instagram, a cool scar photo might be a good one to get some good followers and stuff. <laughs> my eyebrows always get busted open. Like uh, in a couple different fights now, I get cut above my eyebrows. So. Well, like you said, with the, the performance and trying to get some things, um, with being able to just know that you go out there and you put these performances, it's tough to got to, 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 to take these fighters that are lower ranked because I know you want to stay busy. I know you want to stay active. But is it enough now that after, especially with these five fights, are you willing, if Dana, I know he's going to get asked here tonight, what's next for her? And if he isn't willing to commit to it, are you willing to sit back and wait until you get that title shot? Or will you want to take another fight? Because like they pointed out, there's nobody else really for you to fight. You keep having to fight these fighters behind you. How dangerous and how risky is that to keep taking those fights? Or would you rather just sit out and wait? Uh, I don't want to sit out and wait. I think staying busy is important, but... Um, I'm ranked number three right now. Who's ranked above me? Chukagian and Andrade, I think. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Andrade is fighting Calvillo. I think Chukagian's basically already fought everybody in the top 10, including myself. Um, I, I don't know. I, well, I, I don't want to say what's going to happen next from here. It's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm going to talk to my team and um, talk to my manager and yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes from here. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Yeah, Lauren, um, does winning this fight in Arizona, a place where you lived for five years, make this win any more special? Uh, can you speak up a little bit? I'm yeah. Okay. Um, so does winning this fight in Arizona, a place where you lived for five years, make this win any more special? Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice to come to Phoenix and, like, just make some good memories. Um, we moved to Texas in 2019, and... Um, to, to be honest with you, when I left Phoenix, I was a little bit brokenhearted and just, um, like my confidence was really broken and I was like sad, <laughs> you know, and I was kind of on a poor streak. I think I had gone like two and four in the UFC while I lived here. And I, I was sad about it cause I felt like I could be better and I didn't, I, I thought I could be better, you know, and since moving to Texas, I feel like I've. I've become the fighter that I envisioned myself to be. I feel like I've just grown so much and started enjoying the process so much more. And then when we came back to Phoenix, honestly, we got so much love and there was like so many people that called us and were like, Hey, anything we can do to help. And I saw so many of my old teammates and we just had such a great fight week that it was like, this is the Phoenix that I love. This is all the best parts about Phoenix that I loved. And the reason that we moved here in the first place all came out during fight week. And it was just such a great experience. And then to go home with the win, I know my girls were in the crowd tonight. Like some of my best friends flew down um, from Alaska to come see me. And my old teammates from the lab came to see me. And I just know they were going crazy in the crowd. I know they're so proud of me. And they were here with me all week. It just, it really like filled me up with love. And now when I think about Phoenix, I don't feel brokenhearted anymore. I feel very, very happy. And it was just so good to come here and, and make so many good memories this week. Thank you.